We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. What's that? Oh yes, you're going to grow into a good, good, beautiful, juicy fruit, uh, just like the rest. Uh, hey, 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 Tony, Tony, what's happening here? I'm just talking to this plant. Talking to plants? Come on, Tony, I said today we are going to be talking about conservation agriculture, not conversation agriculture. Come on. I see that now. Anyway, I do understand the farmers who speak to their plants. Tony, let's stick to conservation agriculture. Are we clear? All right, let's see what else is there on today's Shamba Shepa. Good, let's go. Let's go. I'll talk to you later. Tony, let's go. Call me. Okay. Tony, let's go. See ya. Coming up on today's show, we'll be finding out how to conserve water, how to maintain healthy soil. We also give a May store a makeover. And we'll look at how agricultural insurance is changing farmers' lives. Boni in Makueni County is a destination for today's shamba which is farmed by the very experienced Justus Kimeu. Practicing conservation agriculture since 2012, Justus is the chairman of Makweni Conservation Farmer, a CBO that brings together 22 farmer groups with about 360 members. Justus knows his crops very well, and he grows maize, avocado, bananas, and plenty of citrus, which is his main source of income. It's a very well-managed shamba, but as you know, there's always room to learn on this show. Kim, uh, we heard that you are uh, the chairman of a CBO in Makwendi. Yes, Tell us about that. yes, I am the chairman of Makwendi Conservation Farmer CBO, whereby we've brought, uh, we've brought together 22 farmer groups mm -hmm. with around 360 members. Wow. Yeah, we've come together and we train them on conservation smart agriculture mm -hmm. yeah gearing to climate smart agriculture wow so now how can yes. shamba shape up help you ah definitely shamba shape up is coming the right time because they are going to link me with experts as far as different uh, different gaps are concerned when you see shamba shape up here we come with experts yes. who are going to help you fill those gaps thank you okay. very much yes. welcome so, we are going to set up our tent oh, and yes. get ready to oh, yes. meet the first expert karibuni sana all right okay, we'll see you later. later thank you okay okay okay, okay. Just make it look so easy. Today's first expert is Paul Saidia. Paul is a researcher from the Agricultural Research Institute in Morogoro, Tanzania, and is here to show Kim a great way of preserving water by using a system known as tide ridges. Aha, uh -huh, Paolo. No. What do we have here? I can just see that you've drawn lines. I'm constructing tide ridges. Tide ridges. ridges. Yes. What are tide ridges? Oh well, tide ridges. These are ridges constructed against the slope to reduce uh, soil erosion, but also runoff, also to conserve uh, rainwater in the field. To conserve rainwater in the field. Yes. How does that happen? I construct ridges. Mm -hmm. Then between the ridges, I construct small furrows called ties. Tides. Yeah. So when it rains, these ties and ridges, they conserve water in those basins. Really, Paul? How, yes. how do you do that? Oh, well, as you can see, I have these sticks. This is 20 centimeter high. Okay. So my ridges will be 20 centimeter high. Then between the ridges, uh, it will be like 15 centimeter high. 
So the height of my ridges will be 20 cm high. But again, in between ridges, I will construct ties, small furrows, to tie water between ah. the ridges to make sure when it rains, then water is harvested in that particular place. There is no more water is moving along that side or this side. Time now for some hard work. Well, okay, hard work for Paul. First, Paul digs a shallow trench about five centimeters deep and then piles up the gathered soil into a ridge. This ridge will touch the line of stream which has been positioned to 20 centimeters high. Same again on the other side. It's beginning to come up. Phew! This is hard work. Uh, I thought we are finished. Not yet. What else do we need to do? This is just a ridge. Okay. So we need the, another ridge. Eh? Another one like this one? Yes. All right. Then in between, mm -hmm. we construct the ties, the small furrows. Ah. Yeah. They're now the basin. Uh -huh. Now I exactly. get you. Okay. Yes. So what we do, we just shift this. Okay. This Can I gamba. help you with that? Yes, I'll appreciate it. All right. With a little bit of help, Paul can now start work digging the second part to his tide ridge. And with the tide ridge complete, we can now see how it will hold water compared to just normal land. These tide ridges serves two purposes. When there's uh, inadequate uh, rainfall, then we conserve water. Yes. But once there's excess rains, mm -hmm. uh, and you find our ties are uh, almost uh, flooded, yes. then that's why there's this one. It is a small uh, furrow. Mm -hmm. Water will go to that level, yeah. then it will go this way, mm -hmm. and it will find its way down. Ah, yeah. it will follow its natural course. Exactly. So, yes, Kim, yes. what would be your parting shot to our farmers? Uh, this is one method that our farmers should embrace. Because mm. as you can see, mm. and maybe possibly if I can just demonstrate, mm -hmm. uh, you come here, just, uh, just look at this one, mm -hmm. you, can, uh, you, can just, you can just see, mm -hmm. you can just see this mm. whole mud, yeah. you can yes. just see. Yeah. Yeah. So when you come here, mm -hmm. just demonstrate the same, Look at oh. this. Oh. Look at this. Never even went so oh. far. Yeah, look at like, this. Like, like two centimeters. Yeah. This yes. is even less than uh, a centimeter. Less than, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. But here, just oh, more yeah. than five centimeters. Very deep. It's deep. Yes. Yeah, you it's can deep. see. Deep. Yeah. Wow, I'm considering trying this myself. Oh, yes. yes. Wow, you this should is do good. this one. Wow. Yeah. So, this is a very cost effective way of farming. Crops and seeds can now be planted between the ridges and inside the basin. It's very clear to see that by using tide ridges, you will make the most of the rainfall you receive and use less water overall. Excellent for conservation agriculture. Now, from conserving water to making sure your soil is healthy, Muteti Ngesu is an extension officer from the county government of Makueni. Guess who knows Kim and his farm very well and is here to tell us why Kim's farm is in such excellent shape. Yes. Now when I look around me I'm seeing a beautiful beautiful track of land. I'm yes. seeing nice nice oranges. Exactly I'm, yes. I'm, I'm seeing trees and yes. I'm wondering to myself has this place always been like this? Uh, no, not really, not really. This place has never, ne ne not always been like this. How was it before? Mm. It was steep. Once it rained, uh, rainwater would wash from the upper side of the, of the, of the, of the chamber to the downside. So wow. it was sloppy. Due to the fact that the place was sloppy, they introduced me on uh, the issue of terracing. Yeah, actually we came, we laid the contours. Uh, Basically, ours was not to just do the drain out, eh? it's just retention ditches to retain water. What are the importance of terraces? Yeah, one, terraces uh, stop the water from 
uh, surface runoff that water is not able to move from one bench to the other so the water is retained into that one bench number two the terrain gets flat it is, it is not sloppy anymore mm -hmm. yes and bearing in mind that we also leave the crop residue here so it will not be able to be washed from this bench to the other one so it wow. is retained here wow so yes. the rain water does that for you exactly is that true? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Actually, our terraces, our contours are level. We are not draining any water out of the farm. We want to harvest this water in situ so that we increase on the infiltration as mm. opposed to the service runoff. Yeah. So when I'm looking at this table here, I'm yes. seeing some crops. What have you planted? These are green legumes, gram. actually, which is green gram. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, why, did you, why did you plant legumes there? Yeah, you see, normally in conservation agriculture, we go for the three principles, the three major principles. That is uh, minimum soil tillage. Then we have uh, permanent soil cover. That is uh, crop residue retention. And then there is crop rotation. Before I planted my, my, my green gram here, I had planted maize. So I had to rotate, I had to crop rotate. Next okay. season, I'll plant a different crop. Ah. Yes. And also, Tony. Yes. That being a legume, green grams will fix the nitrogen in the soil. Exactly. As opposed yeah. to the cereals, yeah? Yes. And actually when we train them, we tell them normally to uh, rotate their crops. So you, you decided on the fruit trees? I decided on the fruit trees, as I do some, uh, some cover crops, that is the legumes. Wherever there is some space, I do some maize. So I'm okay. Now, tell me, mm -hmm. from what you can see and from what you know about this chamber, is his soil healthy? His soil is healthy. As you can see, the, the main stovers, when they decompose there, they improve on the soil organic matter, which is very key to the crops. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what would you tell other farmers uh, who are watching you now yes. and want to start this process of healing their soil or protecting their soil? Would yeah, you advise yeah them? definitely. I know there are so many farmers outside there where they have denuded land very bare, almost useless land. But still, there's a lot of hope. There's no land which is useless. There is no <laughs> land which is useless. <laughs> In fact, that land which looks very useless, it is very useful. Like this one before. Like this one before it looked very useless. <laughs> you are being told this one is useless. Exactly. But I picked from that. Yeah. Now everything is working. So now, uh, I, would, I would advise that farmer, very important, Yes. to seek the services of a surface or of, a, of an extension officer yes. to start there begin with the extension officer mm -hmm. the officer will guide you on where to start and how to go about it yes consulting yes. experts which we as shamba shape up do yeah yes. exactly we bring in experts yeah. exactly and they talk to you exactly and you change exactly and yeah. from what i'm seeing I'm seeing success. Thank you very much. And well done. Yes. Let's take a look at these fruit trees. Exactly. Let's go. Let's go. Thanks very much to Muteti Ngesu. There'll be more good advice after the break, including how to choose the best place to store maize. And how ensuring your crops against loss is not as expensive as you may think. That's all after the break on Shamba Shape Up. What happened to you? you Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. Today we are in Boni in Makweni County, visiting the very experienced farmer Justas Kimeu. And coming up, we find out how insuring your shamba against crop damage is more affordable than you might think. First though, is our next expert. Choosing the right way to store your maize harvest is very important. And as experienced as Kim is, he still needs some of our help. Shadra Kasonzo is a field officer from CGA, Cereal Growers Association, and is keen to see how and where Kim stores his maize. Uh, so, this is. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. This is where the store is. Wow. Yes. Space and building costs means it's never easy having a dedicated store on your shamba for maize. But Kim's store looks as if it needs some expert advice. Kim, uh, there are things that you have done right. That one I can say. But you, there are things that I think you, you, can, you can improve on. 
Yes. First, the store is so tiny. So uh, it's like uh, the, the, the maize and the crops, uh, the products from the, the, the farm uh, are highly congested. So I would recommend that uh, you think of uh, building a bigger store. Yes. Secondly, yes. Uh, place your, your maize on a pallet. Yes. But now, the distance between the pallet and the wall, there should be a distance in between the pallet and the oh, wall. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then uh, when you are, you are, you are stacking the, 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 the bags, we need to interlock them mm -hmm. so that uh, they are not easily, when you, you touch on them, maybe they can fall if they are not stacked. Oh, but, yes. Uh, they, are, they are not interlocked. That is what I mean. So I have to keep them uh, kind of uh, horizontally and vertically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. I'll show arranged, you. Eh? Yeah, I'll show you. Thank you. And then uh, the other thing is that uh, the hygiene of the stock. Yes. And you know, hygiene starts from the time you take. Uh, you 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 are preparing the, the the maze to the store. Time to get the Shamba Shape Up team into action and turn Kim's room into a proper maze store. First, the clutter is removed. This will offer more space to work with. A good cleanup is next. This reduces the chance for contamination and bugs and insects to take control. Pallets are laid down to hold the maize bags up from the floor. And then the maize bags are placed off the walls to leave enough space around them to allow good ventilation. It looks much better now. But will Kim be happy with our advice? Hey, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yes. Now tell me what do you think? Ah, it looks nice. It really looks well arranged. Very different? Very different, really, mm -hmm. yes. What changes are you seeing? You can see that there, there is a space in between the pallet and the, the wall. Eh? Mm -hmm. And also the stacking of uh, the box. You can yes. see now, this in the rock. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. This is how it should be. Yes. Even when you go and build a big store, yes. this is how you do it. Even now I have something to teach my group. Yeah, from I, I, know, I know, I know yeah, your store, I know your store is small, yeah. but we still got to do something about these things. Exactly, yeah. yes, it's yeah. agreed. Yeah, these things, yes. Don't worry. Yeah. Later on. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well done. Excellent shape up for Kim's May store. And it's great he'll be able to pass the knowledge on to his farming CBO members. The way it was and the way it is now, it's really improved. I had not followed the proper steps on how to conserve on hygiene and such like uh, habits, but now it looks worth, it looks very good. For many years, agricultural insurance has been considered for large scale farms only. However, the times are changing, and these days, insurance against crops, cattle, and our very own health have become more available for everybody. Joseph Shege is a portfolio manager from Eka Africa and is changing the way we think about farm insurance. It is usually that myth that uh, agriculture insurance is very expensive, but uh, we usually see that uh, with smallholder farmers. But the answer is no, it's not expensive. This is because working with um, a premium rate of between 4% to 8% for crop insurance, for instance, with the option of uh, you want to ensure the cost of production. Ordinarily, uh, taking a crop like maize, farmers may invest like um, 20,000 in that business. So if you multiply 20,000 uh, 20, uh, times a rate of like 4%, that's uh, 800 shillings per acre. You're paying 800 shillings to secure 20,000. So it's not expensive at all. I chatted with Kim to find out what he knows about agricultural insurance. If someone was to come to a shamba right now and ask you, which is the crop that is so close to your heart? Ah, obvious, my citrus trees. Oh, yes. Someone can know that because of the way you look at them. Exactly. The way you take care of them. Exactly. Wow. Yes. Let me ask you. Yes. If, let's say, something was to happen to your oranges, maybe they are bad, very heavy floods, very heavy thunderstorms and rains, and something just happens to the oranges and they never get to give you what you always get. Or maybe a fire, whatever. Hey, 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 what, hey. what would you do? I'm telling you, you'll have cut me my legs. Mm -hmm. I think you'll have, you'll have grounded me totally. Yeah, for farmers like just as uh, who, who are fearing if uh, their crop is wiped out in a bad season, it's important for them to understand that uh, 
there is an insurance solution for citrus. And uh, uh, this is a product available for farmers who are doing uh, fruit trees. And uh, it can uh, basically, it can bring him back to his business in, in case of a bad season. So it's important for him to, uh, to reach out to insurance companies or specifically to his uh, insurance agents to get uh, that solution for his farm. He need not to get worried. Let's look at an example of what it will cost Kim to ensure the production costs of his citrus trees against loss. It costs Kim 50,000 shillings per year to produce his citrus. After all his hard work, Kim expects to earn 200,000 shillings in a year. Based on Kim's details, he can expect to pay a premium rate of 7% in order to ensure the production costs of his citrus trees. This would mean that he has to pay 7% of 50,000 shillings. This equals to 3,000 shillings per year or 300 shillings a month. In case Kim's citrus trees are ruined, the insurance company will pay him enough money to grow citrus in the next season again. Have you ever thought of any fallback plan? Um, I've been thinking about this as I was doing my strategic plan and my, uh, my business plan also. Mm. And I also thought of uh, maybe sometimes, depending mm. on how busy I'll be, mm. I'll think about some insurance scheme that can wow. cover my crops. Uh, it's also advisable to have other additional insurance uh, solutions for agriculture and for yourself. For yourself, there are other options that uh, uh, he can also uh, get. And these insurance uh, solutions are like uh, credit life or life insurance. Probably when you die, you might leave your, your family in, um, into financial crisis if you had a credit facility with a financial institution. So it's important to even have life insurance cover and even other insurance uh, solutions uh, around uh, like a personal accident, it's important to have uh, these are uh, insurance solutions. Now that you are a chairman of an organization. Yeah, I have Makwene Conservation Farm, a CBO. Good. Yes. How do you think your members will take th that approach? Like, uh, maybe I want to insure my maize, I want to insure my, my, uh, my oranges. Do you think yeah, yeah, you it's something see, they will embrace? You, you see, uh, thank you for that question because we have already started. You have? We began with our own health. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. now that we, have, uh, we are doing a lot of farming mm -hmm. from the CBO, mm -hmm. we have started talking amongst ourselves. How good can we do this one? And we have come to realize that uh, uh, most farmers have confidence eh, with their fellow farmers. So there are um, some models that insurance companies are adopting whereby they, they call that model village champion model. Whereby they train village models, uh, champion models, the village champions, who will take that word to other farmers. To find out more about agricultural insurance, you can text iShamba on 21606. We arrived at the farm today knowing Kim was a very experienced farmer. But today he's learned about crop insurance. How tight ridges can conserve water when there's little rain. And we've shown him a better way on how to store his maize. Oh, what a shape up. Yes. <sighs> we've been here, we've worked with you and the experts. But now, mm -hmm. we want to know exactly how you found Shamba Shape Up. Mm -hmm. Ah, Shamba Shape Up is wonderful. They have really linked me to experts. So do you think our experts have added more to your expertise? Actually, they have really added much to my expertise. Mm -hmm. And the same, I'm going to add more to my farmers down uh -huh. there. Would you like us to visit again? Again and again. Again and again. It's been the great. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you for joining us and we'll be seeing you next time in another Shamba right here on Shamba, Shamba Shape Up. Up.